Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. Let me start by saying my thoughts and prayers are with the folks in Texas who have become victims of Hurricane Harvey. Those of us here in South Florida who lived through Hurricane Andrew know the long road ahead for those folks in Houston. Nevertheless, it is encouraging to see the country come together. Later in the show, I'll sit down with someone who has a unique perspective, the former head of the Miami-Dade Fire Department who took over FEMA after Hurricane Katrina. That's David Paulson. But first, a controversy here at home. Three streets in Hollywood named after Civil War icons, resurrecting old wounds. My colleague, Silva Harpedian, was there when the Hollywood City Commission took up the issue last week. And the idea that some people are being inconvenienced is just ridiculous. I came here to voice my concerns. Even though you suspended my right, to vote on this. More than 140 people signed up to speak at a public hearing, Hollywood City Commissioners, considering to rename three streets that are named in honor of Confederate generals, Lee, Hood, and Forrest, the last of whom was a one-time leader of the KKK. We must take care of our children and tell them of our history. Teach them how to forgive, how to love, how to have comp compassion, how to show empathy, and togetherness we are, and, and the forgiveness in our heart. Because tearing down the, the, the name of Wood and Lee, that don't change nothing. It doesn't change character. This is not a racial matter. Okay, people have turned it into that. What it is, it's a moral mash, a matter. Uh, and we have too much immorality uh, that uh, we are exposed to. Earlier Wednesday afternoon, Hollywood police officers stood guard on roofs and on the ground prepared for any type of violence like the world saw in Charlottesville, Virginia, a few weeks ago over the potential removal of a Confederate statue. I'm here to stand for the South. A lone man stood in support of the street signs, waving a Confederate flag, this man from Hialeah, identified by police as Christopher Monzon, he got into a verbal shouting match that led to this. That was Silver Harpetti. And now that man at the end of the video was arrested and charged with aggravated assault, disorderly conduct, and inciting a riot. By a five to one vote, the commission decided to change the names of the streets. Joining me now to discuss the street renaming issue is Hollywood Vice Mayor Tracy Calari, and who voted against changing the names, and State Representative Joe Geller. His district includes most of Hollywood, and he spoke out in support of changing the names. And before we get started, Joe, I want to thank you for coming in. We were going to have a State Representative, your colleague, Chevron Jones, here, but overnight he had a family emergency, and our thoughts are with him and his family. And Thank you for coming in at the last minute. Um, but let me start with you, Madam Vice Mayor. You voted against this. A lot of a lot of people have their theories as to why you voted against this. Explain. Why did you favor maintaining the street names? Well, first, let me clarify a couple of things. One, I didn't vote in favor or against maintaining the street names. Um, I voted uh, against the process not being followed and being able to allow the voters to have a say. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of, we can go back a long time. This, this has not been the first time that this has been addressed within the city of Hollywood. It's actually been going on over 10 years. Uh, so, you know, it's just maybe because of the times that it's so heated right now and that it was brought to our attention. But ultimately, uh, first and foremost, I, I just want to say I do not one bit support any actions of KKK, uh, white supremacy. It's appalling. Um, and so, you know, with social media, as I mentioned earlier, they come after you and mm -hmm. you say you're a Trump supporter, you're a white KKK supremacist. None of that is true. Um, you know, how this came about is 
we have a process and that process needed to be followed. As I understand, part of the process would be that if you're going to rename a street, typically what happens in Hollywood is you have to get a certain number of people on that street to sign off on the change. If it's going to affect them, they're going to need to get new driver's licenses, they're going to need to change their mailing address, all those sorts of things. So you want to include the, the folks. But I think it was a month or so ago, the commission voted by a similar vote, five to two, uh, to change and waive those rules so that names could be changed almost immediately. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. It was um, during a non-agenda item. It was during commissioner comments that that movement was taken and the vote was taken mm -hmm. to eliminate that. So, uh, you know, prior to that, May 17th, at one of our commission meetings, it was discussed that we made a lot of changes. Um, rolling back the clock to probably 2008, I don't know if you're aware of this, they had changed the fee and made it harder for individuals well, to I, apply. I want to, bring, I want to bring Joe. Joe, why was this an important issue? Why did this need to be dealt with now, and why is it important to change these names, in your opinion? Why do we have statues at all? We have statues because they're symbols. We have statues because they stand for something and they communicate something. And not... Of course, this has been a long-time problem, but particularly in the wake of the tragedy in Charlottesville, now is the time to reject these symbols of division and hate. Remember, none of these generals ever had anything to do with South Florida. This was still swamp. And this wasn't named in the wake of the Civil War. This was done in 1926, frankly, when the Ku Klux Klan was maybe at its national peak two years after they influenced the outcome of the selection of a nominee, I'm sad to say, of the Democratic Party nationally. This was done to support Jim Crow. It was done to support segregation. It was done across the South and other parts of the country to send a message, and it's a message that it's long overdue for us to reject. And I'm pleased to see that it's now been rejected in our community. So, Vice Mayor, if, if process is the issue, is process really more important, though, than maybe making that declarative statement and, and saying, as a, as a commission, as a community, we're going to reject these names and take them down immediately? And even if it, if it goes against our normal process, it's more important to send that message? I definitely think that it's important to send the message that hate is not acceptable in any city, state, or in the United States, but it was it's timing, and it's all, like you said, about timing. And what's unfair is this decision should have been made May 17th. This decision should have been made when the discussion came about of changing the fees. What happens, I think, and what I think is so important for everyone to understand, um, I don't think one person on the commission or in the city of Hollywood promotes hatred or supports uh, Hollywood's a, you're, you're it's sure known as a pretty city. liberal city. It's a, it's a liberal city. It's an amazing city, and I love Hollywood. And this, unfortunately, has created division, which is not division of racism. It's the vision of rights. Well, talk to me. Let's uh, take me inside that room for a second. On Wednesday, I wasn't there. Both of you were there. You, you heard the. Pa it went on for almost five or six hours of testimony. A lot of strong emotion. A lot of strong feeling. Did you recognize your community in that room, Vice Mayor? That evening, I recognized humans. That's all I can say. I can't, I cannot distinguish because. My goal is to listen to everyone, and that night we were set. We knew, we were prepared that this was going to be a long haul, and I just really tried to take in every input from every person that came into that chamber to discuss. Did I see some of my constituents? Absolutely. Did I see people I've never seen before? 100%. Did I see residents of Hollywood as a whole, a, a body? Yes. Did, Did you see? feel, I mean, I mean, do you, you talked about the social media and getting blasted. I'm sure <laughs> you've gotten phone calls. Uh, does it, I mean, you laugh about it and, and It's you, horrible you, because I know who, I know the person that I am and I would support any of this that's going on right now. But what I do support is everyone having a right to have an input. And when you have set the stage for that to be possible, which we, including myself as the commission, set that stage for writer, voters' input, 
and then to remove it, that's where the problem lies. Joe, I, I'm going to ask you, because it's almost on a broader issue with the statues and with the streets. I, I've seen studies that talk about how, you know, large numbers of African Americans don't even really care about this issue. They think it's a diversion from really substantive issues that deal with their economic needs, the needs of their communities, real racial biases that are taking place right now, that when we start talking about names of streets and statues that have been around for a while, it sort of de deflects attention from the real serious concerns that are going on in the community. Well, how would you address that? Addressing these problems is no substitute for dealing with the real life issues that people face every day. Those are certainly paramount. But again, symbols do matter. And, and let me say, I don't know much about General Hood, and you can debate Robert E. Lee, uh, he had some bad things, but you know, um, if this was Washington and Lee University, where he was the president, maybe that would be different. But Nathan Bedford Forrest was a murderer and a torturer, the founder of the Klan, hundred, uh, more than a hundred years of lynchings disgraceful, odious, horrific conduct can be attributed to him. To live on a street, as I said the other night, named after the founder of the Ku Klux Klan is like being asked to live on Hitler Street. There's just no excuse for that, and it cannot be tolerated. Symbols do matter. Do they matter as much as jobs? Maybe not. But both are important. Madam Vice Mayor, I know the next step is, the next thing the commission will take up is what to name these streets now. If we're going to take those names down, how will that process work? We only have about a minute. And uh, is it going to be numbers? Are there going to be other names going to be proposed? How are we naming these streets now? Well, it is going to follow a due process, and we are going to have complete involvement from the residents. I encourage complete involvement from the residents and to have a say-so, since they were neglected of that prior. Um, you know, these are streets that we live on, that we support as far as families, and that's really the main focus. And I, and I, I know that we will be having encouraged uh, meetings for the public to come out, mainly the residents, so that they can help and we can bond together and be able to move forward. Vice Mayor Kalari, Joe Geller, Representative Geller, thank you both for coming in. It's an interesting issue, one that a lot of people are talking about, and we'll continue to follow. All right, thank you very much. Thank Up you. next, we talk to the man who once led FEMA and knows what it is like to handle a crisis like the one taking place now in Texas.